Lockheed Martin recently released their footprint for air dominance. Let's take a look at their press release and what they have in store. So Lockmart recently released an article that says, Owning the skies with integrated air dominance. The ability to execute complex missions with existing aircraft. Remember we talked about, like not too long ago, about existing aircraft and the fact that uh, the 6th gen, we don't know the NGAD. Uh, that's part of the debate. So this is one of the things we talked about, about upgrading current tech, putting current tech in or future tech into current aircraft. Drones and advanced technology working together is not 10 or even five years away. It's now. More than a decade ago, Skunk Works, their advanced programs development group, developed a technology roadmap to enable fighters and drones to communicate securely and perform complex missions together. We've talked about this many times. This is the future. Having a quarterback, one fighter running the show with a bunch of other drones doing some of the dirty work. So they're solving the integration equation pairing the next-gen fighters with the capable autonomous vehicles. Gone are the days overwhelming the enemy with sheer size of force ensures air dominance. Now everybody has to work together. They're using AI to augment human skill with machine intelligence, illustrating how systems can connect. So some of the things they're doing to push the envelope, they did an F-35 uh, CCA connectivity demo, and that is where you have the human in the F-35 with the AI drones uh, utilizing the same hardware and software built in for future F-35 testing uh, proves that piloted drone teaming capabilities are, are uh, incrementally improved upon bringing the Air Force family of vision systems to life. They demonstrated a live fly with an F-35 and the UK um, demonstration. So they took the open systems gateway satellites for C2, and they had a Nexus command and control system. So that is the battle space. Somebody sitting in a command and control bunker can now integrate real time with what they're doing and interoperability with a non-US system, which is pretty cool. The MDCX was the first live control of the UAS. So that's a, a command and control system where basically they controlled the Avenger showcases its capabilities for an all-domain control. Then they demonstrated pilot drone teaming and fly flight tests. So they did some uh, some actual flight tests, real-time commands to the AI-controlled aircraft through the touchscreen, which is pretty cool. And they showed uh, tactical intercepts, which you can see here. And then they did some uh, air-to-ground jamming. So degraded, denied environment. They're using this L L-29 as the technology demonstrator with the University of Iowa. Then they also did the Astari Flyer 1, developing the first digitally certified aircraft. Groundbreaking leap for aviation industry partnership with Astari Digital. It's always become the first digitally certified aircraft. Oh, wow. So digitally certified means that they build it, create it, and flight certify it without ever building a physical prototype. And then... Once it's certified, then they build a physical prototype, which is pretty, pretty interesting. That's the uh, X-56. It was initially developed under the Air Force Research Laboratory Multi-Utility multi Aeroelastic Demonstrator. MAD. Boy, these acronyms are crazy. And then, finally, the X-62 Vista, which we've talked about. That's put the Viper with AI and doing uh, flight tests. So they actually did a dogfight, F-16 versus AI. And that's what they're looking at. Basically, it's a two-pronged uh, approach. AI with aircraft, AI with technology, uh, demonstrators, and then command and control as well. So what does that mean? It means the future is here. I think people, people are always saying, well, the era of manned aviation is coming to an end. I think, honestly... If anything, it's going to be a hybrid for a very long time. You're going to have, because even the 6th gen or the NGAD was manned, I think you're going to have a mix of manned fighters, because you're always going to want that human in the loop, the manned fighters that are the quarterback, and then the unmanned AI-capable uh, drones or CCA that can go down and either soak up a missile or shoot somebody down or drop a bomb. Meanwhile, 
you have the quarterback in the fighter that can also launch missiles, can also drop bombs, and stays more of a standoff distance away. Because while that did say, you know, you can't just overwhelm them with numbers, numbers help. And having more of these will be essential. And I'm interested to see how this integrates with our pilot training shortages because I hate the idea, but theoretically, if you can't produce enough pilots, fewer pilots that are quarterbacking many drones is a force multiplier. So it'll be interesting to see how they do it. Obviously, the command and control piece is the most important because you have to be able to have that kill chain and have somebody making decisions, especially if AI is out there without a human in the loop airborne. So you need somebody with a high fidelity data link that's jam proof, uh, that, that can constantly send information and get information from the drones and then make decisions based on what's actually happened in the battle space and allow the AI to kind of do their thing without becoming fully autonomous where there's no human in the kill chain, there's no human making the decision. Because you, I think you always want that. From a morality standpoint, I think you want a human being able to push the abort button or a human being able to make that decision versus just sending them out there and telling them, hey, go have fun. But theoretically or technically speaking, when you fire a missile, you're basically sending an autonomous kill message to uh, whatever you're shooting at. You're basically saying, yep, go kill that guy. And that's it. You're done. So uh, I guess it's not that far off. Just you're extending that a little bit farther. But it's interesting what Lockheed's doing. It's interesting to me that they're even going public with this, which means that whatever's happening behind the scenes with the Skunk Works is probably six to nine times more advanced than what they're admitting right now, which is incredible. I mean, that's good because our adversaries are not backing down. They're not slowing down. We've talked about on the Mover and Gonkey show, other countries are accelerating their development of drones and accelerating their ve development of fifth gen fighters. So it's good that we're keeping pace and continuing uh, to push the edge with technology. But I still think we're going to have fighter pilots in the cockpit for the foreseeable future. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.